Hi, welcome to this new part, part 13, where we will look at some more questions on AWS Solution Architect Associate. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. This channel is dedicated to help you clear AWS, Azure, and GCP certifications. All real questions, real scenarios, accurate answers. Please refer parts 1 to 12 of this playlist for previous questions. Now let's jump into some new questions. You got an application which runs on so many EC2 instances and the data is stored in DynamoDB. This database is elastic. That means it can increase its size but the requirement is to store it for last 30 days. What is required is a cost effective solution, which is also time efficient. So the first option tells you to make use of cloud formation, which is infrastructure as a code. You can create templates to create AWS resources you want. It would be a bad solution to wipe out the infrastructure and recreate it when you just can have different solution to maintain last 30 days worth of data. And above all, A will not meet the requirements. Why? because what it does is uh, it will redeploy the cloud formation stack every 30 days that means it's a fresh stack which has no data and then it will delete the original stack which had data so this is completely wrong as every 30 days it will give you a version infrastructure which has no data so B tells you to use EC2 instance and which runs a monitoring application from AWS Marketplace. AWS themselves have monitoring solutions like AWS CloudWatch, CloudTrails. There is no need to go to AWS Marketplace. Plus it is doing n number of steps to, you know, del it deletes the data that is older than 30 days. It creates a script and it has like so many steps. There has to be a better option. Uh, and the same problem C has. C takes number of steps like a combination of DynamoDB tables and Lambda functions but there is an inherent capability which comes with DynamoDB databases, which is what this option, option D, explains. Now, what is a TTL? It is an auto expiration routine. So once you set this up, there will be background processes that would continuously evaluate the expiry status of these items in the table. This is my answer. Let's look at the next one. The organization moved the data warehouse to AWS. I have marked this as orange because this is AWS. So there is a direct connect between on-prem this guy this user is an on-prem user who is using a Wiz tool to access this data warehouse whenever he does that the data warehouse returns 50 MB of data please do note there is no cache with the database you want to implement a solution which is reducing like 
producing a lowest outgoing data transfer cost for the company. So you know what your WIS tool, whatever you are doing, if you put it on prem, so there would be data transfer cost because anything that comes in cloud is free. Anything that goes out of cloud, that is 50 MB per query, out of cloud is not free. In cloud, that is this direction, is free. Out cloud, outside, it's not free. So the first option says that you host the Viz tool on-prem and query the data warehouse over the internet. So like I explained, this will be expensive as it would attract the outgoing charges. So we got to see if there is a better option. This one says uh, to put the Viz tool in the same AWS region and access it over internet. This piece is cool because you're putting the Viz tool in the same region which is cool but then if you access it over internet not so cool there has to be a better option again the option C this suggests that you put the Viz tool on premises which is not cool The last one, it says you put the Viz tool in the same region, which is cool. And you access the data warehouse or did it connect at a location in the same region. So that would be cheaper because the Viz tool will be on AWS that's here. And the data warehouse is also on cloud and instead of Routing it via internet, it will use the internal direct connect private connection. So this is my final answer. So you got an application which has many microservices and now you want to move this to AWS. And obviously when you want to do this, you will use the container technology. Which two options would you choose? The first one says, use ECS cluster okay so this is a must here since we want to use container technology so we need to use elastic container service this is great cool if you put Kubernetes on EC2 instances not so cool because uh, a serverless option is better than a server full option C looks okay, kind of, it, because it will deploy ECS service. But what is not so cool is Amazon EC2 launch Stripe. EC2 launch Stripe, you are supposed to maintain it. And it says that your ongoing maintenance should be little, which cannot happen with EC2 launch Stripe. So if you see this, description here it clearly says that you got to manage it yourself option e looks wrong as well it says deploy kubernetes worker nodes on ec2 instances okay now whenever you put ec2 it, you got to have a serverless option this is your serverless option this is far better than a server full option so this is my second answer where you would use a Fargate launch type. Now, what is a Fargate launch type? What it does is it gives you a serverless way to host your ECS workloads. So the advantage you get is you do not need to provision and manage the back end infrastructure. These are my final answers. So this is the code and it asks what impact does this policy have. So this is the policy. So the first one says users can terminate EC2 in census, which is cool because you can, you have allow privileges to terminate. 
but on which region you can do it on east us east one because the action here says everything else is denied except this so this is wrong because it it will terminate the instance on us east one but the answer says except so that is wrong now the second one says you can terminate the ec2 instance which is cool but what is not so cool is the ip address the region is also cool i like it but the ip address i don't like this because this is a reserved ip so it is not available to you for allocation c looks correct users can terminate the ec2 instance this piece looks correct can they do it on us east region yes us one is fine because that is something which is allowed and then the user source ip is 254 which is also fine because this one ranges up to 254 that is correct d it says it cannot terminate which is not so cool because you have been given this allow permission to terminate this deny is on all other requests except terminate so this is my final answer so you got a database which is an rds sql mysql database okay so this is your database and the database support team is reporting delayed reads on database instance as a result of increased transactions and is advising a read replica so be careful the, the this question is not asking you to solve the performance issue they already know it that it can be resolved by using a read replica what it is asking is what do you do before creating a read replica do you enable the pill lock replication so this is, cannot be the answer because you got to provide the steps before you know such kind of replication is set so this i'm parking it for now b says choose a failover priority for the source db instance so this we are talking when a fail a failure happens how would you do a failover but we, we are not going to set the priority before that we need to do something even before that so i'm marking this as incorrect see this is something which you got to do you got to allow all long running transactions to complete on the source db instance because if you do not do that and you kick start your replication the replication would be very slow another thing it says is you create a global table this is a feature of DynamoDB. So for a global reach, DynamoDB has this global table. So I would strike this off for now because RGS conceptually is different. And that leaves us with E. So E is correct as well. Like once you have allowed all long running transactions to complete you enable automatic backups on the source and you're setting the backup retention period to a value of zero so that means a constant replication will keep happening so that the read replica is up to date so this is your final answer please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. A lot of analysis and hard work goes in to produce these contents. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next one. But before you log off from this video, let me summarize what questions we covered in this part. See you in the next part.